In the previous episode, we explored the southern half of Vermont. Today, we remain in the Green Mountain State. Burlington, Stowe, Montpelier, and we'll finally catch up with the peak of fall colors. I'm free in my RV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we left off. We came by Montpelier to Country Camper to get some work done on our flex prototype. And while we're here, why not? Let's drive around town. We're not gonna be able to park with the trailer in tow, but at least we get the lay of the land and we might return in a couple of days. Seems to be a nice town. Beautiful setting here. And it happens to be the smallest state capital in the United States. Just under 8,000 inhabitants. Here's the Winooski River, responsible for periodic flooding in the downtown area. And there's the Golden Domed Greek Revival State House. As I said, right now we're just going to continue towards Burlington and we'll come back in a couple of days without the trailer. We're going to be staying at Lone Pine Campsite in Colchester, just a few miles north of Burlington. Let's head into town. It is such a beautiful day. We should take advantage of good weather days like today. We'll begin by sampling the local ales and cuisine here at Zero Gravity Craft Brewery. And timing is everything. I'm glad we're here early so there's no line to order or anything like that. We've got a pork sandwich and a steak sandwich. Let's dig in. All right, they hit the right spot. Now let's continue. Let's continue exploring uh, Burlington. Not the place where they invented the coat factory. Different Burlington. This is the site of the world's tallest filing cabinet. I guess this would be considered art, right? I've heard some of the higher drawers are used by birds to make nests. In any case, every city has to have a world's tallest or largest something or another. And here in Burlington, they made it a filing cabinet. I want to thank Cometeer for partnering with me in this video and today we're trying something different. This is a dark roast blend from Minas Gerais, Brazil and mm, you can taste that. Chocolate profile, a little bit of molasses and cinnamon and it is absolutely delicious. And you know what it is like when you are dry camping or in the RV in general? Sometimes you don't feel like setting up 
or cleaning afterwards. And that's where Cometeer comes into play. Cometeer isn't like any other coffee. Cometeer is barista quality coffee brewed better through science and flash frozen to lock in the flavor and freshness in recyclable aluminum capsules. They partner with the best regional specialty coffee roasters ground and brewed to perfection. Just add eight ounces of hot water or pour it over cold water for iced coffee or, or milk for a latte. And it comes right to your door frozen in fully curbside recyclable packaging. There's no more need to compromise convenience over quality or incurring the extra expense of going to a coffee shop. These aluminum capsules, by the way, totally recyclable, unlike those other pods you've seen around. Also, you are able to discover new flavors by trying different coffees in each order from the best regional roasters. For a limited time, Cometeer has a special offer for you, viewers of my channel. You can get $20 off your first purchase, plus free shipping when you click my link. That's 10 free cups of coffee and over 30% off. We are at Burlington. Where it is, here it is. It was in this very spot that the original Ben & Jerry's was. It was located at a gas station where today we have this, this parking lot here in downtown Burlington, Vermont. Now let's explore this whole area a little bit. There's supposed to be a lot of restaurants and breweries and all kinds of fun stuff. But yeah, that's the commemorative plaque. Check it out, Vermont's first brew pub. This is pedestrian only Church Street Marketplace. They have a bunch of restaurants, bars, shops, and street musicians. Here's the church that gives the street its name and, of course, the local staple, Ben & Jerry's. The statue is jazz and blues musician Big Joe Burrell. Alright, bye Big Joe. Cool water fountain. Pendulum. Well, apparently, it's a time capsule. They're gonna reopen it in 2099. I'm probably not gonna be here, but if you are, let me know. Well, how are you gonna let me know? Never mind. What am I doing? Burlington seems like a very nice city. It feels modern, but with a certain old character as well. Lots of young people. The perfect weather also helps appreciate it even more. Now, how about we end our day on the shore of Lake Champlain? We're gonna call it quits early because tomorrow and the day after are going to be very long days. We're going to Waterfront Park and the building up ahead is the Echo Museum, which is a children's museum about Lake Champlain here. We should park and go for a stroll.
Here we are. Well, yeah, very nice, very pleasant boardwalk here on, on Lake Champlain, New York on the other side, here in Burlington. And uh, I think it's more or less, this is where we're gonna end the day today. Tomorrow we might come back and go to more places, more restaurants and stuff like that. But I think we're going back to the campground. It's a beautiful day, perfect weather. High 70s, I mean, it's, can't complain. Can't complain about Lake Champlain. We've been pleasantly surprised by Burlington so far. These houses here, right on the shore of Mallets Bay, are super cool this time of the year. I suppose other times cool will become freezing cold, but right now, right now they're really cool. Anyhow, we're going to end the night at our local restaurant, The Spanked Puppy, and yes, we're having our first New England lobster roll. Today we're going to Stowe. It is supposed to be an iconic day trip to one of the most scenic areas of Vermont. Charles Corralt of CBS on the Road once said, thanks to the interstate highway system, it is now possible to travel across the country from coast to coast without seeing anything. Well, I'm glad Interstate 89 here in Vermont is one of the exceptions. While we're missing all of the small towns in between, the views of the Green Mountains are spectacular. We're going to go north on State Route 100, same road we took a couple of days ago in southern Vermont. And our first stop today is going to be Ben & Jerry's. And the tours are closed, as of fall 2021 here. Oh well, let's park and see what's open. There seems to be a pretty long line to get ice cream, so first let's go see the cemetery, Ben & Jerry's Flavor Graveyard. All those beloved varieties discontinued over the years. I wonder if they decide to bring something back, do they remove the gravestone? Hmm, I think I'd like some Aloha Macadamia, for example. Mm, turtle soup, I wonder what that tasted like. Thanks for visiting our nearly depainted. Let's see if we can get some ice cream. Ooh, estimated wait time from this point, 60 minutes. And from here it is 40 minutes. Mm. Yeah, 40 minutes for a scoop of ice cream is probably a bit much, so we're going to continue and uh, towards stew. That's what they used to make the ice cream. Let's continue towards stow. although we have a couple of planned stops along the way. It is a gorgeous drive. Here it is, coming up, the Cabot Farmer's Store. And there's also Lake Champlain chocolates and even Smuggler's Notch Distillery, but I think it is too early for that.
Let's just try some cheese and the chocolate. Unfortunately, we forgot to bring our Truma cooler. Otherwise, we would have bought some cheese to take back. This is Smuggler's Nutch Distillery. Look at all that deliciousness. Got a chocolate because that's what you do, right? <laughs> mm, it's delicious. A little bit of a traffic jam here. This place seems very popular. Cold Hollow Cider Mill. Let's check it out. Oh, the leaves are starting to pop around here. Let's step inside and see what they have. I've heard sometimes you get to see the cider mill in action. Today, at least, we get to have a taste. <laughs> Apparently, that's what remains after they extract all the juice. I guess they're not pressing today, but it tasted great. We had some of those a couple of days ago at the Sugar Shack, and these look great, but we're saving our appetite for lunch somewhere in Stowe. A little bit of a traffic jam getting into Stowe at this time of the day. Apparently, it is peak leaf peeping season. Maybe we'll come to downtown later, but right now we're starving. And I have a couple of places in mind. Also, Jim, a viewer from the area, has been texting me. And I think the plan is to go on a plane ride later today. My first choice for lunch was Idle Time Brewing Company here, but the parking lot is full, so I can only imagine how it's going to be inside. So let's go next door to Picasso Pizzeria and Lounge. It seems very busy too, but maybe there's room at the bar. Nuts. Mm. Okay. That good. Now let's go to the airport. Jim and his friend Jen, the pilot, are waiting for us. I think the town of Stowe should invest some money in several traffic lights because all these four-way stops are very inefficient, especially when you get this amount of traffic. And here we are, Jim is waiting for us. The colors are so great today. It's beautiful here in Vermont. All right, let's do it. Quick.
What a great opportunity this is to see all this from the air. I believe that is Mount Mansfield, the tallest mountain in Vermont. That would be Lake Elmore down there. And that would be Stowe. We may or may not make it back there today. There's Stowe once again as we begin our descent. I just want to thank Jen for the for the ride on the on the plane and uh, see you on the road. Thank you, Jim and Jen, for this unique opportunity, and uh, see you next time on the road or the air, perhaps. Just when you thought Vermont couldn't get any prettier. Uh, I mean, take a look at this place. Everywhere you look, it's picture worthy. Especially at this time of the day as we approach Magic Hour. Look at all these people stopped here, leaf peeping. And yeah, the colors on that mountain are fantastic. We're going to do one more thing today and that is Smuggler's Notch. It is this very narrow and windy road that goes through the mountain pass between Mount Mansfield and Spruce Peak. And I think we're coming back tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow we can even do the Mount Mansfield gondola sky ride. This is where the road narrows and the center line disappears. It would be unwise to take an RV on this road. In fact, they do have warning signs that a trailer may not be able to make it. Yeah, believe it or not, this is a two-way road. In all fairness, they could probably remove some of these boulders and widen the road, 
but maybe they don't want to. Maybe the perceived danger is part of the whole appeal. And we have reached the top. Remember when we first got to Vermont a couple of days ago and I was grousing about all the trees still being green? Well, I'm not complaining anymore. And we're back on the shore of Mallets Bay. Let's see if we can find a place to park for a few minutes and enjoy the view. Well, today was our best day in Vermont so far and uh, I think tomorrow we might go back to the store area and explore a little more, maybe buy some cheese and some local products and, and then the day after tomorrow, I think the plan is to, to enjoy Burlington even more. Maybe we'll, I don't know, I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but we're going to do something. We're gonna make some venison burgers. That's actually the venison hamburger meat we got from our friends uh, from Tampa. And, uh, and you know, the farm in uh, the, the ranch, the ranch in Dade City. Cheers. We're going back to Stowe. These are the Fairfax Hydrofalls on the Lamoille River. And we're coming up from the north. So the plan today is to take Smuggler's Notch in the opposite direction, towards Stowe. seems much more crowded today, but it is also Friday and it is earlier. I was hoping we would be able to park, go for a short hike, but it doesn't look like it is going to happen. And if the road wasn't narrow enough, now we have vehicles parked on both sides. Here we are, the Skyride! 
There are lots of people here, but there's also plenty of parking. This is going to be so cool. Perfect time of the year to be here. Up to Mount Mansfield we go. It would be really nice if they kept these windows cleaner, but it is actually plastic so it scratches easily and I think that's the main problem. Let's see if there's a better view down this trail. Well, we came down here to take a picture, but I think still the better picture is from up there, even though you can see the, the gondola going up and down. It's a good exercise anyway, going up this uh, very steep trail. Yeah, this is probably the sweet spot to take that iconic selfie from up here. I just did a pelican head update from right here and you can see everybody taking selfies here. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't think that the camera will ever do justice to a view like this, you know, with the, you know, with the depth perception, but well, let's walk around. I believe the restaurant, this reservation is only and it's like completely booked, but otherwise lovely up here. Beautiful weather today in Vermont. I wonder where it is that you get on that trail. There's gonna be a trailhead somewhere around here. It turns out this might be the trail that goes all the way to the top. Let's see. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It is someone's birthday. <laughs> oh no, it seems to be closed. I guess there are no trails from here to the top. Not officially, anyways. Hilly, say hello. There's the Colorado right next to a mini. That was a fun ride.
Oh yeah, this is that spot where all the people were taking pictures yesterday. Leaf peeping, I believe is the correct term. So let's park real quick and fly the drone. We're gonna make one more stop in this area, but first, let me reiterate. So, two words, traffic lights, thank you. We're going to stop by the Von Trapp Brewing Beer Hall, founded by the Von Trapp family of the Sound of Music fame in 2010. They produce traditional German and Austrian style lagers. The beer hall here was actually open in 2016. Here are the types of beer they produce. No IPA because IPA is an ale and they only make lagers. I think I'm gonna have the Oktoberfest. Let's go outside. Well, yeah, we did it. Long trap. And this is pretty much it for today. We're taking a shortcut back by the Trap Family Lodge in order to avoid all the traffic so it doesn't look like we're going to get to see downtown Stowe today. Another time, perhaps. And if it seems like our days are short, it is because they are. The way this trip is going, we're working in the mornings and doing the touristy thing in the afternoon. And with the days getting shorter this time of the year, we really have a short window here. Well, we have one more day in Vermont, so tomorrow we're going to visit the state capital. But tonight, we're going back to the Spanked Puppy, and this time we're having a Connecticut-style lobster roll. My favorite so far. Today, we're going back to Montpelier, the state capital. And this time we're going to be able to park and maybe walk around a little bit. Oh, it is lively today. Then again, of course, it is Saturday and probably one of the last relatively warm Saturdays of the year. The State House does have one peculiarity. It is the oldest Capitol building where the House and Senate chambers have preserved their original interiors. It was built back in 1833. We're going to have lunch here at the Three Penny Tap Room. Some local craft beer, and the food is surprisingly good. Yes. 
think we liked it. Montpelier, at least downtown, very nice. Nicer than I expected. Let's walk slowly towards the state house. You know I love a city with street musicians, so this is perfect. Okay, so this is the Vermont Department of Agriculture and of course one of the main Vermont products here is Vermont cheese. So naturally they have a cow. And now here across the street, check it out, that's the state capital. The statue at the top is a representation of Ceres, the ancient Roman goddess of agriculture. The dome was not gilded until the early 20th century. Here's a sugar maple, the state tree. Well, here we are, the Vermont State House, I believe it is called here, not state capital. And uh, I was tempted to maybe do a tour, go inside and all that, but we're gonna save that for another time. Here's another close-up of the goddess of agriculture, the gilded dome. And as we slowly pull back, the classic Doric facade. Many people have recommended we visit this place called the Rock of Ages Granite Quarry. But it turns out it is an actual quarry and only opens Monday through Friday. And today is Saturday, so bad timing on our part. So we're going back to Burlington to enjoy one last sunset over Lake Champlain. Tomorrow we're leaving this beautiful state. We stopped by the campground really quick and let me tell you, this drive from Colchester to Burlington never gets old. We even looked up pricing for some of these houses online and let me tell you, they are not cheap but surprisingly not outrageously expensive either. Let's see if we can make it to Perkins Pier just south of Waterfront Park so we can enjoy the sunset. Yes, we're gonna make it. The sun is still pretty high in the sky.
and um, this is it. I think a fitting end to our time here in the Green Mountain State in Vermont. For the first time, I've seen, I think we've seen many of the highlights. We, we missed a couple of things, which only gives us an excuse to come back one of these days. But uh, yeah, it is from here, from Burlington, on the shores of Lake Champlain, the Adirondack Mountains on the other side that we're gonna say thank you for watching and see you on the road. Tomorrow we're visiting the Granite State, beginning with the Pièce de Résistance, Mount Washington. But more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. I'm free in my RV, yeah.